Previously on transistors, we've taken a look at our sort of four main gates, AND, OR, NAND, and NOR, and we found that in terms of how their circuits are actually laid out, there are a lot of similarities and patterns between them. Today, we're going to actually move on out of that familiar pattern to just a bunch of new gates, right? And we're going to attempt to implement them using transistors. For this, we're going to be starting off with our XOR gate. You're watching another episode of Transistors. Hello and welcome back to Transistors. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the XOR gate, a gate that has a pretty interesting kind of behavior. The idea is, it behaves for the most part like an OR gate, but the difference is, it's exclusive OR. And what that means is, in the 1-1 one, one case, the result is actually false, not true. Another way to think of this would be, well, a test to see if the two inputs are different. If they are, we get a true output, right? If they're not, we get false. And turns out, this slight difference creates a world of difference when it comes to implementing this with transistors. Our previous gates so far have used only two transistors, but now this one needs four. Before we jump into the transistor side of the equation, however, let's first take a look at how we are going to approach this. Now, this is definitely not the only way to build an XOR gate, but you know, for the purposes of demonstration, I found this pretty convenient, pretty easy to understand. So we will stick with this. Let's take a look at its mechanics. Now, here's how we can model this. Since an XOR gate behaves like an OR gate for the most part, let's just go with that particular train of thought. And let's just use, you know, an OR gate. But we have a little on-off switch for it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this switch on. As you can imagine, the gate works like an OR gate, right? Exactly the same way. Now, here's the deal. The only difference now is that, well, when both inputs are on, we don't want this output. We want to actually disable the gate so it gives us a low or floating output. So really, the easiest way to think about this is that we can take our two inputs and just also drive the enable pin. Instead of actually connecting this sort of power switch to another input, we need to drive it using our two actual inputs. And again, the only time where we want the gate to be switched off is when both inputs are actually true like that. So essentially, what we've just described is NAND gate behavior. So I'm going to go ahead and load up a NAND gate here, right? And the idea is that we use that to feed our power pin, and we take the two inputs like so. Now, watch what happens. As long as, well, one of the inputs are zero, this never goes off, and as a result, we get basically all gate kind of behavior, right? Like so. However, the moment I switch both on, this guy goes off, and this goes to floating, right? So of course, if you really want to see um, actual XOR behavior, we can simply use a pull resistor to pull it down. And there you go. This is basically an XOR gate. It is simply an OR gate with an OFF switch. And when we think of it this way, it makes it extremely convenient for us to think about it in terms of transistors. So, this is how we build the transistor version. Now, there is quite a bit going on here. Um, the first thing I need to point out to you is the fact that, well, our two inputs are now up here, right? So this one is input A, and input A is actually being fed to two places along the circuit. Same deal for input B, which goes here and here. Now, this circuit is actually driven by four NPN transistors, two here and two here. And if you look carefully at this, you should recognize both gates they are being represented here. In fact, if we were to just look at the left side, well, this is in fact a NAND gate, exactly what we did in our switchable OR gate. As you can see, again focusing your attention just to this half of you know whatever is happening here, notice how the output on this side is always true, right? The, no matter the values of A and B except when they're both through, then it goes down to low. In fact, this is how we power the other half of the circuit. 
So notice that in fact, this is the power going into this circuit here. And yeah, basically when both go high, no power is coming through. This circuit, you should be able to recognize it as just an OR gate. So in fact, what we are doing here is exactly what's happening here in our fancy OR gate, right? It's exactly the same. We are simply feeding this OR gate using an AND gate. Of course, the idea being, you know, if only one of the inputs are true, this gate receives power, it is able to produce the output. But when both inputs go to true, despite the fact that both these transistors are letting whatever is coming in on top through to the output, but we have actually switched off the power. Since what is coming through is a low state, that is going to go out to our output. So what this means is ignoring everything, right? Just bringing these two here. You will see that what we get is indeed XOR behavior. With both off, we get low. As long as any is on, we get high. But when both are on, the output goes low as well. So yeah, there you go. That's the simplest way to think about an XOR gate. We've just built it here with four NPN transistors. But here's the deal. Isn't this a little bit messy, right? Our whole setup is sort of split into two parts. And yeah, it's just a bit all over the place. Now, what I found is that the easiest way to build an XOR gate is to use a mixture of NPN and PNP transistors. As you can see, that is what we have here. What we've just done is we've taken this half of the equation, right, our NAND gate, and rebuilt it up here using our PNP transistors instead. Behavior-wise, it is exactly the same. Again, we have our two inputs, and the idea is, if both come on, this part gets cut off. We actually no longer give any power to the second half of our equation. Now, this second half is exactly the same as what we had in our previous setup, right? This is just an OR gate using NPN transistors, so nothing new here. The only thing we're changing is our NAND gate to a PNP version. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of the entire thought process. Let us now move on to our schematic before building this on an actual breadboard. As you can imagine, this circuit could be a little bit messy thanks to the fact that we have four transistors now. Um, so what I've done is I have tried to make things a little bit easier. I've upgraded my physical setup so that the actual jumper wires themselves are shorter and color coded. I'll be using the same color coding in this diagram, so hopefully that makes things a little bit easier to see. With that, let us go ahead and jump in, starting first of course with our power rails. From the positive power rail, we can then connect our first set of transistors, namely our PNP transistors, which will form our NAND gate. This is of course connected to our OR gate, and the whole thing goes down to ground through a pull down resistor. So this is basically our full transistor setup, NAND first, then OR. Of course, we want to see the output of what these transistors are doing, so we connect an LED. With this, we can begin thinking about the inputs, and of course to do that, we must start with our two switches. Now, this is where things get a little bit messy, right? But hopefully the color coding will help us pull through. Basically, our first switch will be colored green. We'll of course need to get two outputs from it. And as you can see, one of them is resisted. The other is not. Um, that's just, you know, so that the current is correct to drive the transistors and to not get a very strange kind of result. Anyway, the first point is connected to our first PNP transistor whereas the second one goes to the NPN on the same side. Same deal for the other, we'll use yellow for this one. And yeah, again, the non-resistant side goes to the PNP, the resistant one goes to the NPN. And this basically completes our entire setup. This is all we're going to need to implement our XOR gate. So let us now take a look at our actual setup. As you can see, it's not the neatest looking thing in the world, but our two PNP transistors are right here. They are of course being fed by our two switches, right, via the green and yellow cables. The outputs from these guys are in blue, right, they feed our NPN transistors next. So of course, these two together form our NAND gate, while this forms our OR gate. They go down to ground 
through this pull down resistor and of course at the same time we use our output to light this LED. Our two switches are here and these are our two current limiting resistors. So of course as you can imagine pressing down on any one of these buttons will cause the LED to light. So this is your typical OR gate kind of behavior. However, if I were to press down both of them, like so, the LED goes off. So yeah, that is our XOR gate behavior. As long as the two switches are in the same state, the LED will be switched off. And at any point of time in which the two states are different, the LED comes back on. And there you go, that is our XOR gate. And yeah, even though we've sort of mixed multiple transistors, hopefully it's not too hard to understand. But yeah, that's basically all there is for this episode of Transistors. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.